In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this rough bookcase. And then in the next part of this series, I'm going to show you how to build a rolling library ladder and trim this out for a full wall of books. So let's get started. All right, let's get started with this build. I've purchased two sheets of three quarter inch plywood. It's furniture grade, so it is really nice stuff. The back side has lots of knots, not that pretty, but this side definitely looks nice and is good for a bookshelf. Uh, my local lumber yard has this for $35 a sheet. So if you look at $70 total for a bookcase, uh, it's a really good deal. So let's get started here. I have drawn out my cuts. So the first thing I want to do with this piece that is here on my table is cut the sides for the, um, the bookshelf. Before I cut these into individual sides, I'm just going to cut the two feet section out. That way I can route out the grooves um, together so I know that they're going to be lined up because they were cut from a single line. So my level here is exactly two feet long, so I'm going to just match up these corners and just draw out where I need to be cutting here. Feel free to use a tape measure or whatever you see fit. That's basically what this thing is, is a tape measure. I'm just going to make a couple marks that I can use to get my straight edge here, which I'll be using to cut this out with a circular saw. I purchased these Irwin quick grip clamps on Amazon and they have been so very helpful. I'll put a link to them in the description below if you want to check them out. Good price and they have certainly been very useful. All right, there's the line I need to use for cutting this out. Yeah. One more note is that I've got the saw set to a fairly shallow depth because I don't want to cut through my table down here. I need to have exactly one foot between each of the shelves, except for the bottom. It's going to be a little bit bigger. So on the very top up here, I have used a piece of this plywood and I've set it up here on the top and I marked that out to find how much I need to route out up here on the top. And then I came down one foot and made my second mark. So now I'm going to go down from that mark here and make my third shelf. And I'm just using this square to line this up at the correct spot. And now I'm just using pencil to mark this spot out. Luckily it is a foot on each side so I can just use this over and over. Now that I have that line, I know that between the bottom section here and the top here is going to be right at a foot. And so I need to come back and use this to make my mark here. And that is the next location of that shelf. The room this shelf is going in is eight foot tall. And so I have to cut this down to uh, 94 and three quarters inch so that it will fit inside the room. And so this is going to be the new top edge of the bookcase. Now I'm using a router to cut the groove in here so that the shelf will be able to fit like that. So I've got a straight edge here that I am using as a guide. So I'm setting this onto my board and then I've got the plunger down so I can look in here and see if it is where it needs to be. Right there. And then I'm just using some clamps to hold this into position. Then I move this over and once again line it up to make sure that it's 
where it needs to be. So far this seems to be working out quite well, just using this little guide piece here. And so what I'm going to do is plunge this down a little bit, cut a track, and then plunge it down further so that it's not doing all the work at one time. And here is the finished track. A little bit off down here at the end, but not too bad. As you can see, still fits the shelf piece quite nice in there. I've used the router and completed all of the grooves for the shelves. Now it's time to cut the two side pieces out from this single piece here. Now that I have the two side pieces cut out, I need to have a little corner piece up here to account for the molding at the top. To do that, I'm going to mark an inch and a half down using my ruler here. So inch and a half, which is going to be right there. And then I'm going to use the 45 on my uh, square here to line that up and just make that line. And I have used clamps to get these together so that they are in the correct spot to cut these out together. Now that I have the two side pieces complete, it's time to start cutting out the shelves. I'm going to use my square here, and I have it set at exactly one foot on the, uh, the edge here. So I'm going to take this along the straight edge, the factory edge, and I'm going to mark just like I did on the previous board and get a line all the way across so that when it's time to cut this in half, it's uh, just going to be much easier this way. Now that I have the center marked for the two pieces, I need to make shelves that are 47 and a half inches. So I come down here, put my square at 47 and a half inches. I'm going to mark that. And since these two pieces are identical, I can flip this around here and get the other piece that is over here. I now have all eight of the shelves cut. The very top shelf, because the uh, molding at the top is going to take up a certain amount of space, I need to reduce this shelf by about an inch and a half. So I'm going to do uh, 10 and a half inches here on this board and cut out that strip so that it will fit at the top of the bookcase. So let me do that real quick. Because this bookshelf is going to have a four foot span, there's going to be some sag in the middle of the shelf if there is no support. So basically, I'm going to cut out a 12 inch by 12 inch square to be put in the middle of this shelf to give a two foot by two foot shelf with middle support. To make these supports, I'm going to use my tape measure and I'm going to measure out every uh, foot and mark a line here. And then I'm going to come back and cut all of these out. I've marked out six blocks. The last one I need is going to be for the bottom shelf, which is larger than the others. And it needs to be 16 and 3 quarter inch. So I'm going to mark this out and do 16 and 3 quarters. The seven support pieces have to be attached in the middle of the bookcase. 
And so there's no real way to get the screws in here to get this locked down. Now I can go, let's say I was gonna put this on the bottom. I could screw up from the bottom, but then if the next piece is up here, how do I get screws into that piece? So to remedy that issue, I'm gonna be using the Craig pocket hole jig. This is gonna put an angled hole into the wood that I can put a screw at an angle from the back side here. Now I'm gonna keep the, the pretty side uh, towards the direction that most people will be seeing and the uh, less pretty side will be going uh, against the back wall. So we'll see that here in a bit, but I'm gonna use this Craig jig to put some angled screw holes in here. And like I said, pretty side is gonna be away from those screws. So let's get these drilled real quick. Now that all the pieces have been cut, I'm inside to assemble and install this bookcase. To begin, I've laid the two side pieces out. Now remember that the bottom shelf is gonna be the tallest shelf, so I have that closest to the wall. Next, I need to match up my shelves here in the middle. So it's gonna be a 12 foot shelf between each of these and on the top and bottom is going to be the shelf that has been altered a little bit. So let me get this one for the bottom, I believe. Let me make sure. Yep, so this one is the one that's been cut to 11 inches down here at the bottom. And then for the top, I have the one that was cut to, I forget, was it 10 and a half inches? I'm laying this up here at the top so we know which ones go where before we begin. To get this assembled, I want to have the front facing side as flat as possible for the trim board. So I'm going to use the floor as that side. I have the pretty side facing up here. I'm going to use some Tribon 3 wood glue. Not too much, just a little dab in here to help get this thing locked into place. Flip this up, and then I'm going to be using some two inch screws to hold everything into place here. I like these Torx screws, they seem to have a better grip. It can be difficult to find the correct place to line up your screw for the bottom. And so what I like to do is just use my square here and draw a line because this is gonna be facing the wall and you'll never see this line. It just really uh, becomes helpful to match up where you need to put that screw in. I have all the shelves attached to the first side and now it's time to get the second side on. This one can be a little bit tricky because you have to work a little quick to prevent the glue from dripping out too much, but I'm gonna go ahead and apply glue to each one of these shelf pieces and then stick it together. And then I'll be able to put the screws in after that. Now that I have the glue on each one of those, I'm going to get this lined up and installed here. And to be a little bit of a pain, having to line up each one of these shelves, but just work at it to get it installed there. Now that the frame is put together, it's time for the supports in the middle. I need to mark out 23 and a quarter inch here as my point for the shelf to be installed at. And then I'm gonna take my square, and just like I did before, I'm going to mark down here to give myself a little guide on where I need to place this shelf. So, do it on that side, and then also measure and mark up here as well. So 23 and a quarter, and that way I'll have the position for center 
on each side of this shelf, like that. Now on the bottom shelf here, I don't have pocket hole uh, pieces drilled in, so I'm going to place this, and I'm gonna do just like I did with the other uh, support pieces. I'm going to drill two screws from the bottom and the top here. Now because my uh, molding is down here, I had to add this little extra uh, cut, which you may not have to have on your setup. Now for all the middle support pieces, I'm just going to get them set in here, and then I'm going to use the same two inch screws coming in from the top, and then I'm going to be using the pocket hole screws to get the bottom attached. So I'm just going to come here and hit these install. Make sure I have this lined up where I want it. And now I'm going to swap my driver over to the square bit. And the angle is pretty steep in here, so it's a little bit difficult to get this to go exactly where it needs to be. I have the basic frame of the bookshelf done. Now I'm going to try and pick it up and get it back here into position. It's a bit heavy, so I recommend you do this with somebody else if you get the chance to. Now that it's in place, I'm concerned that it may tip over on someone. So I'm going to be using a bracket here, and this is going to be installed into a stud to keep this from coming down. So to do that, I'm going to use stud finder here. Okay. So I can put a piece right here, and it will be very good. I'm probably going to put four of these total, so I know that it's not going to be causing any issues with falling down on somebody. Well, that completes the rough end of this bookcase. As you can see, it's nice and sturdy. I still have two more brackets to put in before I'm done with that. The next step is for me to install the middle section here so that I have the entire wall covered in bookcase. And then I'm gonna bring you along for the trim work and then a rolling library ladder will be after that because my wife can reach this shelf just fine, but this top one, is a no-go for her. So that rolling library ladder will be really nice to have. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for part two coming up soon. Thanks. Bye.